wedding bells, although last night on the Golden Wedding, I believe they finally, when they got around to it, it was Ave Maria. Yeah. Oh. Yes, but the Golden Wedding, it happened last night, two hours on ABC. It was live. It was True Love brought to you by Amazon. Yeah. It was brought to you by Amazon. I wrote that three times yeah. down. We are in an Amazon commercial. Uh-huh. Uh huh. When are they going to understand? That they don't have to verbalize it. We see the packaging. That's enough. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's like amateur hour when it comes to like verbalizing that they go, yes, I got this off your Amazon. Well, it's probably in the contract that they say Amazon 10 times or seven times that the name is mentioned. It was almost so jarring those moments. Oh, I know. Because it was like so set up where they even asked people to leave so that they could get the clear read on it. They could. And and La Quinta Resort and Club in Palm Springs is not your average La Quinta Inn. This is very fancy. Okay. And Jesse Palmer, who has grown on me so much this season because he loved these ladies and he felt like he was the most genuine. He yeah. He felt wooden to me before... After he first took over. Absolutely. He was one of those people where I was like, I don't really see the appeal, but I'm also fine with it because I really didn't care. I don't really care who the host is as long as they don't get in the way. Yeah. And last night I thought he was, dare I say, likable? Dare I say? And he starts out, my wife is in labor. This is live TV. If, If we come back from a commercial break... It's because I've had to go. What can I say? It's live TV. Emily, I love you. I mean, the girls I was watching with, it was evenly divided. Yeah. Because it's their first child about how dare he. Right. To, um, well, this is just going to be an exciting part of the baby birth story. Absolutely. You know what? At least most times, first babies, it takes a while. It does. So I have a feeling she was didn't even have contractions yet, the way okay. they were phrasing it. So okay. I'm sure it was fine. But it did add an element where I... I think maybe that was part of the likability of like, oh, yeah, I forgot you're not a robot. Yeah, yeah. And then um, for uh, whatever, you know, then we see the golden ladies, you know, yeah. we see Pickleball Ellen and she says, I'm wearing the earrings Gary gave me. Well, I mean, the producers gave her. Yeah. And then um, Natasha who was kind of the shorter gal. She had a velvet gown on. She ended up giving a motivational speech to yeah. all of America. Felt, she was very funny. She was funny. Her her speech felt a little unhinged, a little, ins- a little insane. I Bring have... love into your lives. Don't watch your children. It was very, you know, kind of Bill Murray-esque. It felt like, <laughs> I was like, I could just feel myself being like, I could see them cutting the mic at any moment. Yeah. Like, where is this going? Because I didn't, I did yeah. not know where it was going. But make no mistake, last night they the producers chose Kathy, the one who famously told Teresa to zip it because she did so much humble bragging about the connection she had with Carrie. She also she and Susan Knowles are doppelgangers. For Caitlyn Jenner and Chris Jenner, they absolutely. really are. And Kathy has had a glow up, but she was absolutely unhinged. She and Charity Lawson, who's the most recent bachelorette we saw in Dancing with the Stars, they were in charge of the golden carpet mm-hmm. interviews. And for every one word Charity got, Kathy got 25. She. Somebody said on Twitter, she's the Joan Rivers of The Bachelor. And, like, she was so abrasive. Oh! And I loved it. I, I would, did, too. I kept going. At first, I was like, Kathy, I wrote Amateur Hour because she wasn't really asking questions. And then I realized, I don't even care about the answers. I would rather listen to Kathy anyways. He, it was a stream of consciousness, like a fire hose, because it was all just bubbling out. And it was so funny. And Charity, you could see getting more annoyed Absolutely. by the minute uh over especially because Kathy then was hitting on Charity's fiance, fiance Dodum who's yeah. like 7 feet tall and the camera had to keep Well going Kathy down. had a shtick and that shtick was I don't want to die alone and I'm going to verbalize it 40 times and at first I was like okay but I actually thought it was funny it I, was funny I would rather have that than any of their generic answers any of the in, like charity or charity was really like relying on we're going to have interviews it's going to be fluffy and Kathy's like a bulldozer through yeah, all yeah. that Yeah yeah Kathy was clearly better at it and then yeah. Kathy's golden 
a correspondent moment happened without charity, and that was when Leslie Fema, who you know was thought she was going to marry Gary, and she said, "I'll quote." So we all know that you did not get the man of your dreams. You had your heart broken on national TV, and now you've had a health scare. And I I thought, oh, it's bad enough you have a bowel obstruction, and then it's brought up on TV, and then she brings it up. But, but Kathy, Leslie... Wait, Kathy is the human in, in vision of a bowel no, obstruction. obstruction. <laughs> it was unbelievable. And, and Leslie, she just kept her good face on, and you could tell... That she had practiced, probably a PR person at ABC yeah. coached her because I'm convinced she is the Golden Bachelorette. There is no reason she would have shown up. She oh, doesn't seem especially thousand, tight with the other ladies. No, no and she, this is, they got her in early. Got her this. in early. She gave a very pat answer. She, I support I'm, love. That's yes, what she kept saying. Yes. It was short and sweet. I, you know, I support love. And they never showed her again. Not until a key moment in the wedding. What? I didn't see it. Leslie, you did not see I the key. I missed it. All right, well, let's get to it. We're going to continue being on the gold carpet. Hang okay, on. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, and I, I can't believe it. Were you texting at the same time? No, I literally watched it. Well, I, I had was skipping the, around. A very shady boots moment by <gasps> the producers. And then, okay, so then getting back to Kathy, then Kathy came in hot. Faith, who was the third place woman, who Gary kissed in front of her family, French kissed, and told her he loved her and would never hurt her. Kathy says to her, you told Jerry you would not move and leave your dead horse buried in your backyard. Do you regret that? Would you move now? That hit her the wrong way, too. Did you? Her response was like, well, I didn't say that. It was like... She did say that. She absolutely said that. Yeah, and then she, the other, this other lady, Katie Bigger, who's allergic to cats, she told her, I'm going to get you a whole passel of kittens when you get she married. She casually threatened her. She casually threatened her. I loved that. Um, yeah, that was a, a, a very iconic And moment. then she called over some showrunner and said, we all need drinks, we all need drinks. And then she toasted all the single ladies and Charity is like, oh, well, I'm not single. Yeah, exactly. She just kind of sat there rolling her eyes. Can we also talk about the awkward Christmas they had? How The, the, the pre-tape? The pre-tape Christmas was insane. That many people sitting around on the couch quietly made me feel anxious. Mm-hmm. I also had to laugh during the, one of the Amazon commercials that they were putting on when they said, we should get a milkshake maker. Oh, yeah. And I was like, do they mean a blender? Is that is that code for... And also... Do neither of them have a blender? Like, don't they have everything yet? They're 70. Yeah, they have everything. There's no crap they need. The, 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 I don't know like, what it on. was. They the, don't need any more crystal glass, but Amazon was presenting the wedding. I know, but I had died laughing when they said milkshake maker. I was like, do they have never, they ever heard of the word blender? Because that's hilarious. Yeah. Well, listen, when we come back, um, we're going to get into the uh, oh, ceremony because the show had a lot of filler a and, lot of pre-tape and we need to talk about the bachelorette party oh we're going to <laughs> boudoir <laughs> Chippendales yes so much to get to we'll be right back you hey everybody welcome back we are talking golden wedding recap we were just absolutely delighted my group we made so much noise I can't even imagine but I will say at the for the bottom line of it all the these two seem very happy together, very suited to one another. I, I don't have any doubt they're going to stay together. Listen, I, I think we've all said versions of this mm-hmm. is, yes, I I think they are perfect for each other. And I also don't want to sit next to them ever. Yeah, I know. That's the kind of people. Yeah. <laughs> they're fine. Well, they're in love and they're meant for each other. Right. And they're perfectly suited okay so let's get to the next pre-tape segment which was that the um teresa gary's daughter her daughter and of course uh susan knowles who uh was the officiant and kathy Zippet all went to badgley mishka looked like it was on rodeo drive i was appalled that brides have to dress upstairs and go down a slippery oh. staircase to show their friends and family what they were wearing that Bad must lay out. That must be for the show. I don't think so. Because that's where that, the dressing rooms were. That's actually unhinged and insane. It's unhinged. And is almost assault. I thought the first dress she tried on was the dress. Me too. 
But she didn't get that dress. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. She asked Kathy to zip it, you know, the dress. And then the next thing we got to, back to the golden carpet. And this couple, I'm like, wow, who's this guy in the cowboy hat and the feathered earrings and this pretty blonde? And I'm like, oh, yeah, they were just on Bachelor in Paradise. They were both on a Bachelor and Bachelorette. It was the dumbest conversation. Brayden and Christina. And he ended up proposing to her the number one tacky thing you don't ever do to somebody at the uh, wedding is wear white or upstage them. It, like, luckily for Gary, uh, is is that their engagement was so cringe. Painful. It was so oh. painful. When they when they go, I he acted like Tenacious D is some deep well, cut band. He, yeah, he told this long story long. about he knew Christina was the one when she got a, understood as Tenacious uh, D reference. D reference, and I and I looked at my friend Abra and I said, Tenacious D is a quicksand of marital strength. Okay, this is this is not anything strong. Life is too long for your strength. Of commonality to it be was, that, and there's I just and then she is moving to Tennessee to be live with her. I was like, I just I it kept, was painful. It was so painful. And when they got you know when they got down on the knee and asked married, I go, I don't want to be here right now. I would I would burst out laughing at a man in a cowboy hat with his feathered earrings. Yeah, who's that pretty and dressed to match my dress. Jesse Palmer, obviously the producers were in his ear because when they came back from commercial break, Jesse hastily confirmed Braden got Teresa and Gary's permission uh, just that day to pop the question. The Hollywood speak, he asked the producer and they're like, yeah, fine, we need to fill five more minutes. <laughs> and and then Neil Lane got his appearance. And yeah. then another great pre-tape segment is Teresa invites Susan, Sandra, Ellen and Faith to her bachelorette party, and she says, we're all doing a boudoir photo session. I was quite frankly impressed, because I would never go to somebody's bachelorette party and say, oh yeah, I'm I'm going to pose in, you know. Never. never. And especially add the element of TV, TV? to it. And the, I'm sorry, there is a, like an amount of prep that goes into my body. Those that, ladies were game for it. They were like, okay. okay. And I thought to myself, First up, I had two thoughts going through my head. First, I would never, could never, should never, <laughs> don't ever surprise me with a boudoir, boudoir photo. photo. I couldn't be more uncomfortable. Also, they need to reach out to Real Housewives, the Bachelor franchise, because they do this thing where the Real Housewives do these things when they have these mon- like these big events where they invite some of their real friends as well. Oh yeah, to make it seem less unhinged that yeah. they just have these four best friends they met a month ago. I don't know. Maybe they're going to have Golden Bachelor in Paradise. We can only hope. Oh, my these God. These ladies would be good. And the, and the pictures, really, the women all look great, Amazing. except for poor uptight Pickleball Ellen, Ellen who yeah. was in a negligee and uh, ankle strap gold sandals, which I've never seen anyone pose on a bed. <laughs> she was sandals. She was wearing something I would honestly wear to work. It was yeah. full coverage. Full. It was fine. And then and Sandra was very funny because she was caressing the wood and imagining Denzel's D, yeah, which and they bleeped out. They mentioned quite a bit. Quite she a bit. has the softest voice and says the naughtiest, naughtiest things. things. Then they're all sitting down and all of a sudden lights come on and five Chippendale dancers come in. And the ladies went crazy. It was a very funny segment. They were drumming buns and drumming abs, and all of them were quite delighted at all the taut skin that was around them. I would have to say it was easily the most appropriate I've ever seen strippers in my life. Uh-huh. A lot of like TikTok dances around people. Yes. There was not very much friction, and I get not, it. Yeah, yeah, that was fine. I get it. I did like, though, that Sandra brought one of the Chippendale dancers without a shirt as her date to the wedding. Uh, I'm telling you, Sandra is my MVP. I know, but I did not like it when she used the term uh Escort. I thought oh. that was a slip of the tongue. Maybe, maybe. It doesn't sound great when you say this paid man is your escort. Then at long last, it's time for the main event. And the most clumsily timed commercial break happened before Teresa walked down the aisle. She was in the shot. They didn't even have an Amazon uh, uh, tarp over her <laughs> because we saw everybody yeah. before we went to the commercial. So it spoiled the reveal. <laughs> yeah. And 
uh, actual real life wedding officiant Susan is a pro. She was really great. She was so funny when she pointed out. She said, Gary, when I met you, I said, I knew I was going to marry you. And I mean, that got a big laugh because there she is up there actually marrying And she's him. like, yep, and here we are. And I'm marrying you. Her earpiece fell out and she just calmly put it back she in. She was. She was good. You could tell she's done weddings before. Yes. She knew what to say. Um Teresa's I, strappy little sleeve broke, so yep. that's not the Badgley Michigan moment they were hoping for. I know, and I saw I get talked to. At first, I thought it was a transitional dress, and then I realized what is happening. Live TV, baby. Live TV, baby. Live TV. Um, at for two seconds, I thought, okay, I think, uh, I think Susan's talking a little bit too much about herself. She did, but it transitioned well when it she did. went full on about them. Yes. After and I appreciated that, yeah, and did. she was so good. Her Knowles nuptials business is going to go way, way up. up, and then the vows, you know, were lovely and everything. It was hard to take my eyes off Gary when she was speaking because he's just like on the verge of crying, and his eyes are twitching, and 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 then he had to nervously, you know, check his notes yeah, and yeah. everything. But the shadiest moment okay. came. He, and of course, we did get, you're the woman I can't live without, but then he referenced Costa Rica and when he fell in love and he knew she was the one, the one and only time, the Bachelor producers, I'm showing it for the YouTube, and they pan to Leslie, and we call that stone cold face. Yeah. You guys, this didn't happen that long ago. No. Like the finale like, was... What, a Six month? Six weeks ago. Yeah, like a month and a half ago. So they panned to her. She looked like a million bucks, but you could just see the only reason I'm here is I've signed a contract and I'm going to be the Golden Bachelorette. I'm going to go watch it again. I miss that completely. Oh, yeah. And the pro- so the producers were very messy on that one, but they just did it once. And, and then also um, the person, the people who picked out um, the daughters, the bridesmaids dresses. Should be... Put in fashion jail. I was going to say Alcatraz, if we could still get that up and running. I got the photo of that. They committed four dress sins in one dress. And they had them do speeches between vows, which that doesn't work. That doesn't. It Here's the picture. It's so bad. It's like, hey, you guys are not 20-year-olds. And we're going to put you in with uh, chiffon. We're going to also do ruffles. We're going to also do pleats. pleats. It was so and bad. And strapless. Yeah. People really, I'm having trouble getting that one in focus. No there worries. But it was really, I mean, especially Gary's one daughter with the dark hair who's got some bubbly, bubbly boobs. The whole way do- walking down the aisle, they were bouncing. <laughs> they were rippling <laughs> like a lake. <laughs> this is live TV, people. Right, right. And the yeah, no, there was struck. it was an actual offense. Uh, and how dare whoever put them in those dresses? It better not have been Teresa. Is all I'm going to say no, because that is not a good stepmom nice. move no. or well, mother move. But did you notice the orchestra kept playing louder because they were going on too long? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. The orchestra kept playing louder to try and get them. Were, to... were they out of tune? The orchestra? Yeah. Possibly. Okay. Possibly. And then, um, and then, yeah, when he just, when he brought up Costa Rica and the vow and cut to Leslie, Twitter sat up on its little hind legs and were was typing r- furiously. And I was so avoiding anything spoiler alert. I haven't even looked. I cannot wait for the memes. I cannot wait oh, for the so break. Good. Cause, you know, I watched a good portion of it the next day too. But uh, there's something we have to step back at. At one point, Somebody said, we know when they're doing the boudoir photos, they said, Gary is going to explode when he sees this photo. I could not stop laughing. Yeah, I, I am not mature enough for that. For that crazy. Well, there's another little unfortunate mid vow reaction shot featuring the overly bronze Trista and yeah. Ryan, our very first bachelorette couple to get married on TV. She had so much bronzer on. Right after Gary promises to make Teresa the happiest woman on earth, Ryan mouth to Teresa, not going to happen. And you could clearly see those of us who are lip readers yeah. and can pause and rewind. He's like, not going to happen. 
and and then they fumbled to get the rings untied. I don't know why anyone ties rings on fussy bows. Note to future brides. Yeah, don't that sounds do that. terrible. And Susan then asked them to imagine their life together in 10 years and Teresa mouths dead <laughs> and I died. I love her forever for that. That was so good. So good. So good. And then we got at the reception 13 seconds of Ben Higgins and Leslie and Gary trying to Gary wasn't there yet. Um, Leslie was there, and some of the other, they were dancing to um, Little Boo Thing. Yeah, they which cut, obviously they only bought like two songs, two songs, right? Because they had Little Boo Thing and, and they, Don't Stop Believing, but they played Little Boo Thing twice. Twice, and I'm like, no, that's- yeah, because Gary and Teresa walked down to that, and Teresa threw the bouquet, and it was ripped apart like by three different people. It was like a, a multi-woman pile-up. It was Three piranhas. People. Yeah, it was piranha mode. And then Gary's trying to give a brief farewell speech, but I'm so sick of hearing him say the same thing. I know. The wedding band plays him off after he says, my advice is don't stop believing. The wedding band kicks off with don't stop believing. The hammy lead singer steals the show yeah. off the stage, and he shouts, Gary, catch me. And if he reminds you of the wedding singer from old school, yeah. That's because he, he is. is. Yeah, I noticed that too. I died. He's the one who uh, changed the lyrics. Yeah, when he would add, you know. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. So that was that was it. Well, listen, we got to go because we want to just get some phone calls from yes. people on their reaction. Six five one six four one. If you have any thoughts of the golden wedding recap, true love brought to you by Amazon, we'd love to hear from you. Well, obviously, yeah, people yeah, are yeah. so riveted by our conversation. The calls are slow to come in, but I do want to thank Tara. She pointed this out. My mom pointed this out. She said, did y'all notice how absent Teresa's son has been during the Golden Bachelor? Yeah. He wasn't at the I kind of Christmas forget she, he had, she had one. Other than walking her down the aisle, yeah. we've not heard from the guy. Maybe he doesn't think that much of Gary. Yeah. That could be true. I mean, Ari could be one of those people that like, and I know this is would be rare. Shy. Doesn't want to be on TV that much. Maybe. Um, we got a message from Charlie uh, via Julia. He sent this to Julia. It said, of all the set designers and fashion people on the show, could no one button Jerry's jacket for the wedding? Oh. And that really irked him that his jacket was open the whole time. Yeah. Well, the other thing... Um that uh, that did crack me up is that when they did the pause for the taking the vows, you know, Gary was up the aisle and they waited for Teresa and we saw her and then, and then you know, it was brought to us by shingles. Yeah. Shingrix. Get your commercial. You and know? you should get your shingle shots. But I was like, That's- there were a lot of age related ads and then ABC collected a ton of ad revenue. Uh- I mean, Golden Bachelor Save that franchise. And we have Martha on line two uh, to tell us about, she watched it. Martha, Martha, Martha. Give us you. Hi. Happy New Year. Same to you. I was so thinking about you and Julia last night. I said, oh my God, who was that couple? The guy that he, he, he he proposed to her with the guy with the earring. Yes, that's. That's Brayden. Uh, Brayden, and he was on a Bachelorette season, and she was on a Bachelor season, and they just got together in the latest iteration of Bachelor in Paradise. That was just stupid. It was. I know, <laughs> and it's it one of those so things. Stupid. And then they said they have earrings together. They have, I mean, it was so stupid. They must have had five minutes that they were panicked about Philly. <laughs> I do think this is a good time to mention, like, watch out. If you name your kid Brayden, they might end up like this. We have to. Be- <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that's all I have. But thank Martha. you. For- <laughs> good thank to, you. Good to hear from you. Well, I guess a handful like Entertainment Tonight, Entertainment Weekly, and a couple other outlets were invited to this by ABC. Mm-hmm. I took the one from Kristen Baldwin, who is the TV critic for Entertainment Weekly. And here's a couple things. She said there were four signature cocktails, an old fashioned called the final rose, a spicy margarita called birthday suit and a drink called one headlight, 
with Prosecco, elderflower, lemon juice, and pomegranate. That is a recipe for a hangover. And then some other vodka drink. And then I guess at the wedding, everybody had an assigned seat. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense for the cameras. For the cameras. And no phones were allowed during the ceremony. Love that. And guests who brought their cocktails in had to put them under their seats. Kathy. And they could whisper, and then they got the 10-second call. And after Gary walked down the aisle, you know, he had to then walk back down the aisle. They were timing it. So when he walked up the aisle again, he was said, now it's for real, because they had him do a walk to time it and that's why he was kind of whispering to people uh when he was waiting for Teresa. all i kept thinking about is if i was at that wedding i would really want to be on the couch like the chair the couch looks so comfy that would be my dream spot a two-hour wedding is everybody's worst nightmare for the actual wedding to be two hours we've got another call mary hey mary did you watch it last night I did. I watched it. It was just a lot of filler. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to say, we go to La Quinta all the time. Our kids live in San Diego, which is, if you know anything about Southern California, is cold. And so we go out to La Quinta where we can be warm. And we stay at that resort. It's huge. It's so big, we get lost on the regular. Really? (laughs) Yeah, it looks really beautiful. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. They have uh, gorgeous golfing. They have everything from great big villas um, to, you know, a regular hotel room with two two beds. Mm -hmm. And every little pod has its own pool. Oh, nice. Yeah, so there'd be two rooms, two rooms, two rooms on each side of the, you know, the pool. Yeah. But it is. It's it's absolutely gorgeous. And then I just... (laughs) I, I'm just not a fan of the bride. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I feel that. Do you think yeah. she's just too clingy for you? She's too clingy. I mean, maybe help with the nose. I don't know. I just... <laughs> I, I try. I keep looking at her and I'm just like, nope, uh-uh. What did you think when they cut away to Leslie Fema when Gary was saying vows and referencing Costa Rica and her beautiful stone-cold face? Yeah, well, I think Leslie is a star. Yeah. I mean, a five star, and uh, she could beat this girl all day long at anything she ever wanted to do. Yeah, I think she's going to be the Golden Bachelorette. What do you think? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, that's what I'm rooting for. Okay. Yeah, I think she won by Uh, losing. I don't think this was, um, I think this was a plus for her. Because even when I watch their marriage, I go, could I imagine Leslie up there? With, with him? Gary? No. No. I can't. Well, Sorry. And also, don't you just think she called him out oh, so good. So good. And how shortly after that did he get called out in public for, the, you know, I she know. nailed it. Yeah. She did. She, she did. did. Mary, oh. you're very right. Very right. Very good. Well, okay. on Love the, your show. Thank I you. Thank you. On the red carpet, some other things we found out. The Golden Bachelor ladies did an interview also with Entertainment Weekly. Leslie Fema said the wildest DM she got. Somebody wanted to be my sugar daddy, and he itemized everything he would pay for. I've been hit on by way more younger men than men my age. Um, Edith, who's the beautiful blonde who was on the prowl last night, she said, I'm in shock. I have so many men in their 30s. And then um, April, you know, who's kind of the, she said the creepiest one was an old yucky man. And then his wife messaged me and asked me for a threesome. So these ladies are getting some DMs. And um, Joan, the one who had to go home because of her daughter, she said, I um, actually went on a date that came from a DM. So I'm opening up my horizons and I will explore some of those DMs in 2024. And, of course, Pickleball Ellen wants nothing to do with DMs. No, she actually went on a date, uh, and I think she's having fun with her life right yeah, now. Yeah, uh, I love that. I love that they're getting the attention they deserve. Mm-hmm. I also think that to hear what you're opening horizons means, if you want to slip into Edith's DMs, Go there's ahead. a chance she might respond. Right. So, uh, yeah, that was... Yeah, the, the vibe of that wedding was like, it reminded me of like a 70s talk show. I could see Caitlin Bristow, yeah. who's always super thirsty. She was in a green gown. 
trying to provocatively eat big stuffed things on sticks. And I, I saw Michelle always Young, in the shot. Always yeah. in the shot. Michelle Young was there. And then even Caitlin busted in for the Leslie and Ben Higgins dance. She's yes. like, I'm gonna get in on this because I know in. this is gonna be on the screen. Right. Uh well, does she host then for them? Well, remember she did the double. Remember when they had the two women hosts? She w- would like to be on like entertain uh, one of the entertainment shows, but um, she's she's there's an annoying factor about her that yeah. um, someone's going to have to work with her on. I I <laughs> like her, but I don't think I think she's. Let's not go meant out for... with the shot of the night. Yeah, last night at the wedding. Beautiful. Gary, do you take Leslie to be your wife? Here's the message. all those. Shady, messy batch of producers. Love it. We'll be back.